It is the fan favorite segment, the fans on happening this particular afternoon. Second of February, the year it is 2019. Touchline is still on air until 3 p.m. Maxwell Wasika remains to be my name. Osoro Robert is gone. I don't know what he's feeding himself outside there. But he will be back next Saturday. Joe Saina is coming here, man. Um, scared that the Stones can get hauled at him because I said he rarely watches Kenyan game. How have you been, man? I've been okay. I was in Bukungu Stadium the other day watching a game. <laughs> now you're going to make me be enemy number one. No, no, I appreciate Kenyan football. I appreciate the teams that are playing. Obviously, the management has a problem, but it's still the love of the game. It's still football. I'll still watch it. Tyra's good to have you on board. How have you been, man? Good to have you too. Um, excellent. Thanks for having me. Missed you guys a lot. Mm -hmm. Thanks for uh, giving me a chance to hang out with the men of the moment. Men like, of the moment. Like squad. <laughs> and Abizo is coming here for the first time, man. Ah, second time. I think the first yeah, time you on this particular time. platform you are talking matters business. Yeah. How have you been? And how are you? How is Chelsea Football Club? Gonzalo Higuain arrived at Stamford Bridge and you're getting thrashed for nil by but little known Bournemouth. What is happening at the bridge? We're really struggling, but we'll fix our house. You will fix our, your house? Yeah. Good to have you. All right, gentlemen, let's get started. And we're going to start with what? We're going to start with what? Joe Saina, you know you are a happy man. Marwan Fellaini, the Belgian international, is gone to China. Yeah. Antoine Martial has extended his contract. Good news coming from Old Trafford. It is good news, obviously, Martial extending his contract. I mean, he's proven his striking worth, obviously, from the attacking phase. It's also a good. It's also a good move because we are retaining these young players for future. You know, for for future games. And at some point, the transfer market is going to be very big, to a point where by affording some players, it's going to be a problem. You know. That being said, um, I think we, I think we still need to address the defensive situation. Obviously, the other game, it showed us that we still have some defensive uh, problems. But that being said, I think uh, the, the team is heading the right way. Um, let's see how, the how we'll do in the Champions League, to be honest. I'm very skeptical. I have to be a Jose Mourinho whenever we're talking about Manchester United. <laughs> you have to be skeptical. <laughs> and Jose Mourinho, the other day, I had an interview with B in Sports, yes, and he's uh, choosing his words, uh, especially directed towards Man United, and he's saying that, you know, when he will be making uh, his decision with regards to a team he will be joining as a tactician, he has to know in advance the ambition yes. and the long-term plan of the club. And I think that one he might have been talking in reference to Man United. You are a big supporter of Oleguna Solsha, the Norwegian international, and uh, you've been an ardent admirer of him. But he got reality checked in midweek against Burnley. To all. What's the reality check there? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he lived up to his reputation, savior of the team. They did it the Sir Alex Ferguson way. They came back into the game on the score sheet wise in the dying minutes. That's the way they always did it under Sir Alex Ferguson. And who used to do it more than anyone else? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And this time he did it as manager. So they were going to lose. And imagine what people would have said had they lost. They've drawn and he's getting so much stick for that. Why? I mean, they drew the Manchester United way, the Sir Alex Ferguson way. What better way to do it? I'm extremely proud of what he has done so far. Fine, they still remain at sixth position, but points-wise, look at where they are. In fact, were it not for uh, pff, that um, late entry into the United uh, regime as manager, had he come in earlier, one beggars to think, where would they be right now? They'd be probably at the top with Manchester City and Liverpool going for glory. So that overstaying of the Mourinho regime actually held back Manchester United from its full potential. So let's stop going hard on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Let's save that for later. There'll be days for that. But so far, so good. It's about objectivity and partiality with regards to this particular show, especially when it comes to fan zone where we're discussing international football. But apparently today, I think two Man United heavyweights really defending <laughs> their team. Of course, <laughs> as a neutral fella and a supporter of Nottingham Forest, two times UEFA Champions League winner. And at least we have a Biz who supports Chelsea yes, Football yes. Club. For Arsenal supporters outside there, in case you're going to come on the show and, of course, talk to us at Wasike Maxwell at uh, hashtag touchline Y254 at Y254 channel. Just inbox us. Then you're going to come on this particular set and discuss and 
defend your team as well. We Manchester are also City. on Twitter. We are also on Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> Twitter at Titiwayaki. At Titiwayaki. How about yourself? Uh, Joe Saina. <laughs> Joe Saina. Joe Saina. Joe Let's Saina. interact. Yes. <laughs> Let's interact. And Ronald Okoth has just been here and he's left. He's a Manchester City supporter. And uh, I think... Just joined uh, recently. Just joined recently. Hey. <laughs> this, this are the <laughs> from Chelsea and from Arsenal. <laughs> So you you guys, what you're trying to say that there are no genuine Manchester City supporters? Exactly. This guy might uh, have they been a national for the past three years. Mm. The Maximum came, five years. They came in. The team came into public uh, mm. limelight. Think a few years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ronald Okoth, you have to defend yourself whether you are a genuine Manchester City supporter yeah. or, or a fashionista. Or a fashionista. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Abizo, it's talk to us about the title race. Do you think it's going to go to the wire? You see, after midweek clashes, Manchester City getting beaten by Newcastle United. Yeah. Alan Shearer, man, the former international for England, the legend, mm -hmm. celebrating on set live on TV. But what do you make of the title race going forward? Uh, I think now Liverpool have the best chance of winning their first title. Because, uh, you see, there's a gap of five points now. And uh, they have actually just lost one game. As compared to Man City, who have lost almost four games. So I think they have a better chance. If they don't utilize it now, they'll never get such a chance. But having, having listened to several pundits, just like yourselves, mm. they are saying that it's likely to go to the wire. Liverpool... Uh, as well, you know, drawing against Leicester City, Harry Maguire, the English international, yeah. equalizing, it's not something that was expected. Yeah. Do you think the dynamics of the game, the title race can shift and City have got a winning momentum, they know how to do it, especially towards the end of the league. Do you think they can replicate the same and leapfrog Liverpool? No, they can't, but it all depends on, actually, I think this weekend will actually uh, determine because uh, it depends if Man City are going to beat Arsenal. I think they have a better chance of closing the gap. John, and yes. Several midweek clashes. Mm -hmm. Chelsea getting beaten by uh, Bournemouth. Mm -hmm. Today they are playing against Huddersfield. Mm -hmm. Sari Ball, <laughs> a man who just came from Napoli, mm -hmm. seems things are not going his way. And the other day after losing uh, to Arsenal, he said that it's hard to motivate. Chelsea players. Uh, negative news coming from the manager I, it, and I, with the player mutiny, you know, called player revolt mm -hmm. being reported at the Stamford Bridge with senior players, Eden Hazard. Mm -hmm. I hear they, he's got some sort of a row with mm -hmm. the tactician. That will affect the delivery of the players on I the think, pitch. I think this is where now man management comes in uh, as a manager and this is where you, 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 you know, you, you work towards what you're being paid for. As a manager, you're supposed to sit down with these players and say, we have had a torrid time, okay? We have not been lucky successfully in scoring goals. Our midfield, clearly, um, I got someone from Napoli thinking that he'll replace Kante. He can't replace Kante. You understand? And our defense, Luis, is not working very well. So how do you address these three angles? By going to each of those players specifically, sit down with them, get to know what's troubling them, get to know what's troubling Hazard. Since the beginning of the season, Hazard has been playing as a false number nine. It has not worked. Right now, they have a, they have a striker in here going. Okay. What Sari would do, and this is my honest opinion, change up that system. Okay. Have Higuain, who has been playing all his club, be, club career years as a single striker up front, have, um, whether it's Ross Barkley or, uh, yeah, w Ross Barkley behind him as an attacking midfielder, have William on the one wing, have Hazard on the other wing. Both of them who can cut in. In the middle of the park where we've been having a problem, let Kante drop back and, 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 and help the other uh, uh, midfielder who's, who's there. In the defense, which is very critical, Rudiger needs to stick with Luis at every time. Communication is important. Getting the, getting, getting the assistance from the left, left uh, back, who's Caesar, and on the right side at the same time, Marcus Alonso, give it a 4-2-3-1. Play to your strength, which is Higuain, as a sole striker, as a target man. 
Chelsea has been widely known for using polished players and experienced fellas uh, during most of their assignments, and they rarely use, you know, the upcoming talent. As we speak right now, mm -hmm. Adson Odoi is reportedly, you know, interested to leave the bridge and probably join Bayern München, but unfortunately the transfer window closed yesterday, so that is not happening. But do you think the blend of youth and experience is good for the team? What I think really is that after Chelsea won the Champions League a few years ago, their proprietor, Roman Abramovich, sort of relaxed. He was initially very involved in what was happening with the team behind the scenes. And you could see him attend almost all of Chelsea's matches. But after they won the Champions League, it's as though he felt, yes, I have achieved whatever I wanted to achieve. Yes, he has so fired... So he got in complacent? Yeah, yeah, kind of, because he has... Fine, he has subsequently fired a few managers along the way since who did not quite deliver what he wanted. And usually his prime target is the English Premier League. But I think the Champions League elevated his thinking process and he became contented. So in a way, it, it, let me contradict myself, it lowered also his thinking process pros, pros, uh, where well, he's, he's thinking in terms of ambition and he sort of relaxed. So th I'm, I'm glad you've used the word player mutiny because what we've been seeing in Chelsea is a bit of player mutiny. Mourinho came back to Chelsea for a second spell, won the Premier League and then in the second season there was arguably player mutiny yeah. and he got kicked out. Then came in Antonio Conte, won the Premier League. In his second season a repeat of what happened to Mourinho in his second spell. Player mutiny. And this player arguably. mutiny, player mutiny and he is got, orchestrated by influential and senior and players. And he got kicked out. And then, um, now we have Sari. He's come in. And he's not even been given a chance to win the Premier League. There's arguably a player mutiny. This was not happening before when Roman Abramovich was actually involved almost hook, line and sinker in each and every detail of the squad. But ever since they won the Champions League, and then, of course, Abramovich had problems. Some say the problems were in Russia with Putin. Some say there were no problems in Russia with Putin. Others say the problems were in England, where they refused to renew his, his visa. Yeah. And so he, maybe he got caught up in the bureaucracies of, of life outside of Stamford Bridge. <laughs> and, and he sort of got his eye off the prize. When you invest in a team heavily, you've got to be involved with it heavily. That's what Vishay did with Leicester. That's what Mike Ashley has failed to do with Newcastle, Newcastle. United. Yeah. So Daniel Levy at Spurs. Exactly, although that kind of thing. And that, now what happens is when the, 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 the cat is out, the mice come out to play kind of situation. So that's what's happening at Chelsea. And it would be most unfortunate if that became the trend, if that became normalized. Because we are seeing it a bit too often at Stamford Bridge. And arguably, one can say it more or less happened to Mourinho at Old Trafford. So really, this problem is deeper than what you see on the pitch. It goes into the boardrooms, mm -hmm. and that's where you can see the problem coming from. Similar situation with, with Manchester United, the Glazier brothers. They were said not to be interested with United. So the team started, I mean, there's even a Manchester United offshoot team that has been formed by fans. Why? Because they feel that this ownership is not interested in the actual club itself. They buy these clubs to play with money, some of them, not all of them. So player mutiny takes over. And that's what happens when there's a vacuum at the top. The guys at the bottom take charge. And a crowd cannot rule. In as much as we love democracy, and it, a crowd cannot rule. Abizo, you are a Chelsea supporter, and uh, do you agree with their sentiments? Do you read from the same script with them that probably Roman Abramovich, the tycoon, the Russian tycoon, mm -hmm. who is the owner of the club, has failed to stamp authority and uh, take control of the team if, you know, the team has to perform? And probably between Sari and the players, especially uh, Eden Hazard, who is on the wrong? Actually, I think there's a big problem. Uh, the players have a fair share of it, even the coach. Because Abramovich, uh, I mean, uh, Sari, Sari came with one tactic from Syria. He thinks it's going to work in... He's rigid-minded. Yeah, he's very rigid-minded. Because you can even actually predict his uh, substitutions. <laughs> he normally takes off, Kovacic brings in Barkley. Mm. The same thing. 
So I think he needs to have a plan B. And uh, from the player's side, you know, I think there's a tendency that is actually growing in Chelsea. As in every season, they expect to have a new player and a new coach. That's a big uh, problem. That, that's too much inconsistency. That's yeah. too much inconsistency. That's a big problem. So I think actually, um, sorry, the main problem he has is trying to force Jorginho mm. to play in the first 11. Because so, he's the one who signed him. Exactly, and because he knows Sarri ball. So, Jorginho is not a bad player. He has a good reputation in Serie A and he's been good for the past two seasons. But now the big problem he has, you see in big games, what they normally do, they just shut Jorginho. And Chelsea cannot play football. Mm -hmm. Actually, we've, we've gotten results from long balls from David Luiz. And see, that actually makes David Luiz to go deeper, to number six role. Mm -hmm. Then there's Rudiger is left alone. So do you think uh, Saribol has been getting his tactics wrong? And uh, he's been getting rigid minded because I've heard from several Chelsea supporters that yeah. you can even predict his lineup regardless of who he's facing. That has been his main undoing. Yeah, main undoing. And uh, actually, he can even try one game and put Jorginho outside. Play Kante in his natural position. You cannot expect the best CDM in the world to play as an offensive midfielder. Mm. 